Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Before you go up in the clinic this afternoon, I'd like to acquaint you with the use of the clinic equipment and tell you how to record the plaque control scores. First of all, let me demonstrate the use of the clinic equipment. The unit is turned on by sliding this door down. Be sure that the door is all the way down and that these red lights here are on prior to use of the unit because if the door is not all the way down, the unit will not be completely on. The next thing to do is to grab hold here and pull this out. The only things that we'll be using today will be the combination air water syringe and it is a two-way syringe. The air is on the top portion of the syringe and the water is on the bottom portion of the syringe. The only additional piece of equipment that we'll be using will be the saliva ejector. The saliva ejector is pulled out and is turned on like so. The other uh, portions of the unit will not be used uh, for the procedure today. The only other piece of equipment that we'll be using, of course, will be the dental chair. The dental chair has a number of buttons here on the side of the chair which operate the chair. The top button, when depressed, floats the uh, chair on an air cushion so that it can be moved back and forth. The top button here will put the seat down or up. The next button is designed to lean the chair back. And the button below that tips the entire chair up. Generally, the position that we work from in the clinic is with the patient's head at approximately elbow height. Now, let me bring a patient in and explain the recording of the plaque control score to you. Now, I'd like to demonstrate to you the method for disclosing the patient so that you can visualize the amount of plaque on the surface of the tooth and also for recording the plaque control scores. Take a cotton swab and dip it into the disclosing solution, getting a liberal amount of solution on the swab. Be careful that you do not spill any of the solution on the patient's clothing because the stain will not come out. Then I would move to the mouth and retract the lip and cheek with the mirror. Take the disclosing solution and more or less flood it on all of the teeth so that both the interproximal and the buccal and labial, air labial areas of the teeth are covered. This may take a number of applications of disclosing solution. If all the surfaces are not covered, all the plaque will not be disclosed. Once the patient has been disclosed, then you can let them, you can use the water syringe in the cubicle to let them rinse out. While the patient is rinsing, let me demonstrate the plaque control score form to you. On the plaque control score form, the teeth are numbered from one all the way around to 32. The maxillary teeth are represented at the upper portion of the chart and the mandibular teeth at the lower portion of the chart. Each of the teeth is divided into four sections on the chart. Looking at this tooth here, number eight, the tooth is divided into the buccal segment, the lingual segment, the mesial segment, and the distal segment. Each of these segments will be recorded for plaque scores. 
When using the form, it's important to first of all record the patient's name in the lower left-hand corner of the chart and the date in the lower right-hand corner. And please write legibly. Now let me move to the mouth and show you the recording of the plaque control scores in the patient's mouth. The first thing you should do is to record the missing teeth. The missing teeth in this case are tooth number one, number 16, number 32, and number 17. In recording the plaque control score, only plaque limited to the gingival one-third of the tooth is scored. This is the plaque that is most significant from the standpoint of gingival inflammation. Plaque located more incisively on the tooth is not important from the standpoint of this control score. Beginning with the buccal or labial surfaces of the teeth, plaque is first recorded on the chart in this manner. Plaque included between the mesial line angle and the distal line angle on the buccal, in other words, this area here, is recorded in the buccal quadrant on the chart. We notice that on tooth number seven, there is no plaque in this area. On tooth number eight, we have plaque in this area, so I would fill in the quadrant on that chart. On tooth number nine, there is no plaque in this area. Moving to the lingual, I would record the plaque scores in the same manner. Plaque on the lingual is located on number seven, right around the gingival margin on the lingual of number eight, and at the gingival margin on the lingual of number nine. Following recording of plaque on the buccal and lingual, I would then record the plaque on the mesial surfaces. Plaque recorded either on the mesial buccal or mesial labial, or the mesial lingual of the tooth, here on the inside, will be recorded in the whole quadrant. We have plaque on the mesial of number seven, on the mesial of number eight, and on the mesial of number nine. After the mesial surfaces have been recorded, then proceed to the distal. The distal of number seven shows plaque. Maybe I can show you that a little bit better with the mirror here. If you look very closely there, you can see that there's a good deal of plaque on the distal of number seven. And if we move back again here, I can show you that there's plaque on the distal surface of number eight. And turn your head a little bit this way and there's plaque on the distal surface of number nine. Instead of completely filling in each one of the quadrants, it is adequate just to mark a small dash in each one of the quadrants recording the presence or absence of plaque. The plaque control score is calculated in the following manner. This patient has 25 teeth. There are some 68 recorded quadrants recording plaque, which would give us a present index of 68%. In other words, 25 teeth would be represented by 100 quadrants. And if 68 have plaque, we would have a plaque index of 68%. Now over a period of time, you notice that this is on the initial or first visit from the patient. Over a period of time, you would expect a reduction in the plaque control score, 
to a level approximating 10 percent. This chart here demonstrates the presence of plaque on approximately eight surfaces, giving a present index of about 8 percent. The plaque control scores should be useful in motivating patients toward improved oral hygiene and evaluating the success of your preventive program in the office. As one further note, I think you will find that the use of the plaque control score is very useful in the way of providing reinforcement in preventive maintenance visits and can be a vital part of any disease control program in your office. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.